In this video, we're going to take another look at our high-end uh, DX446 machine. We got 20-minute videos on old technology, computers, laser discs, some CDs. We got two little dogs licking their balls on the screen. And now it's time for the show. Today we're going to take another look at this DX4 uh, 46-class tower machine. That video went over pretty well with you guys. A lot of you guys really seem to like that video, taking a look at this machine um, that I kind of randomly picked up at a swap meet. And uh, I got a lot of good comments and a lot of good suggestions. And we're just going to upgrade it a little bit today. There's a couple things I want to do. I want to get some things working on it. Uh, we're going to swap out that CPU for, uh, of course, say AMD 5x86. And we'll take a look at uh, overclocking that processor and seeing how it goes with a couple different speeds, see how it compares. Um, that's another one of the big things I wanted to do with this machine because uh, in the past I've done a couple videos now on 50 megahertz machines. And um, 50 megahertz was an interesting front side bus setting for these machines. It was kind of official but not really official. Um, I mean, it, it was so unstable that it just wasn't really used very often. And uh, even though there were uh, DX processors, uh, DX50, that ran at 50 megahertz, it was, it was very temperamental. You had to have the right uh, components, and especially if you had VLB, uh, you had to have the right kind of, you know, VLB cards, or you could run into all kind of problems. And I've, I've done a couple builds with that 50 megahertz bus so far, and there was always this kind of mythical rumor that, you know, these 50 megahertz bus machines, you know, flew, and, um, you know, they beat the pants off of 66 megahertz DX2s, and uh, all my evidence suggests that really isn't the case. Um, you can get them running stably, but not quite as good as people seem to have made about. Um, I don't know, maybe they have rose-tinted glasses from that era with their 50 megahertz builds. I, I don't know, maybe I just didn't get it down quite right yet, but yet another comment I had was pertaining to the AMD 5x86, that uh, running these machines at the 50 megahertz bus, then you really see the benefit then, then it really flies. So. I also wanted to take a quick look, and we're going to look in this video, does the AMD 5x86 overclocked with a 50 MHz bus do better than if we overclocked it with a 40 MHz bus? So we'll be looking at, um, we'll be looking at it with a times 3 multiplier uh, 50 MHz front side bus, so we'll be looking at the AMD chip running at 150 MHz versus if we had a 40 MHz front side bus with a times 4 multiplier running at 160 megahertz. So we'll take a look at that, see what results we get with those settings. I'm not going to do too much card swapping. Um, I am going to remove that caching VLB controller. I wanted to use that in another machine and I think I have a suitable replacement and uh, just some other minor upgrade. We're going to keep that video card in there. I think the biggest uh, upgrade we're going to do is that uh, CPU. We're going to go from the Intel DX4 to 100 megahertz to our AMD 5x86 133 MHz, but we are definitely going to overclock that guy to uh, 160 and of course 150 as well. So if that uh, sounds interesting to you, let's go over some of the upgrades. One of the first upgrades I did is the RAM. So we took this guy from 32 megabytes to 64 megabytes of RAM. Now, 32 megabytes is already pushing it with a DOS machine. Um, that's already overkill. Uh, you could easily get by with eight. 16 megabytes of RAM. So 32 is a little overkill. Uh, 64 is super overkill. <laughs> um, you're not going to see many DOS applications that are going to, you know, want 64 megabytes of RAM in there, if any. Um, although I might install Windows on this machine. Um, I don't think I've ever had a, a 486 class machine running Windows. Maybe I have, but not very often. So I might put Windows 95, maybe 98 on this guy. So this might come in more handy there. 68 megabytes, you know, shouldn't hurt anything. Um, uh, there's a couple games that might go a little wonky <laughs> with too much RAM, uh, but that's going to be few and far between. Uh, you could probably go through games and maybe never run into one that might have a problem with too much RAM, but I think there's a couple out there. But anyways, the spirit of this machine is just to max things out with the 486, so we're going to go with 64 megabytes of RAM. Again, I might put Windows on here at some point, so you have that. 
Another thing you might notice if you look at the sound card, it's the same sound card and we still have the uh, floppy drive running off that SCSI on here, but I did remove the Wave Blaster and this card has the, you know, hanging MIDI bug, so I thought that Wave Blaster would, you know, find better use on a different card that didn't have that problem, so I did remove the Wave Blaster, but that's okay, we can always hook up some kind of external uh, MIDI device. Um, I could always put a MIDI card, a dedicated MIDI card in here, although I don't know if I'm going to do that. Um, but also we can use uh, the port here for, you know, general MIDI. Um, this will probably, this will have issues uh, with an MT32, uh, games that use the intelligent mode. Um, but I don't think we'll really be using an MT32 with this build uh, games so much, so um, this should work just fine with a uh, something like an SC55 or an SC88 for general MIDI and sound canvas. Now as I said I did remove that caching uh, VLB IO controller card. I wanted to use that in a different machine but I think I found a pretty suitable replacement here um, and that does have uh, some built-in ports on it. Um, so this right here this is actually uh, this guy actually had the box for this thing. Um, this is the VLB Pro, the world's fastest VL controller for IDE drives. It's from CMD, and uh, it supports um, it supports you know fast ATA, enhanced IDE, uh, all these little features. Um, I have tested this thing, and it runs fine. And it does see the hard drive as two gigabytes, so. Uh, I'm not limited to 512 megabytes, and this thing's pretty comparable. It's it's pretty fast. I haven't really done any direct comparisons. For all I know, this thing's actually even faster than that caching controller I have. I don't know, maybe depending on the hard drive you use, but um, this works just fine. And it has the added benefit that the uh, zip drive just works now. Um, I might have been able to tinker with that uh, caching controller to get the zip drive to work, but it just works with this. So that is now working fine at the moment. So for our build we'll be using a AMD uh, 5x86 at 133 megahertz. We're going to try to overclock it which I'm pretty confident uh, it will overclock at least to 160 megahertz uh, just fine. These chips generally do that routinely. Um, now even though these are 5x86, I've mentioned this in other videos in the past, uh, where we've looked at this chip, they are true 486s. They're just supercharged 486 chips. Um, now these, I believe these both have date codes of 1996. Uh, they're slightly different variants. This is the ADZ and this is the um, ADW. Now generally the ADZ chips are regarded to be better overclockers than the ADW, but that's not always the case. I guess you gotta look at it on a, a chip for chip basis. Um, uh, these both have, you know, Windows 95 compatible marks on them. Now this is the same chip, this is an AMD 5x86 at 133 MHz, but this is a much later one. I believe the date code puts this one at a 2001 production date. Um, you'll see the little marker here, it just says, I believe it says Windows, Microsoft Windows compatible. Doesn't give a specific operating system. A little bit different, DX5, uh, you know, 133 This I think the, uh, what is that, B, B, G, C. Um, now, uh, this should be pretty much the same chip as these guys here. Uh, it is much later, though. I mean, logic would, would suggest that maybe this one is a better overclocker because they had the process down uh, pretty well by this point. Maybe worked out any bugs. Actually, what I was reading afterwards is actually these older, the ADW chips, uh, tend to be better overclockers than even those later ones, so I'm going to give this a try. And for anyone interested, I do have the manual to this motherboard. Um, I believe the one I have is, is this one right here. Uh, from the comments I got in the last video on this machine, um, this is an ASUS motherboard, and it's, it's pretty reliable, which it is. I haven't had any troubles with this motherboard. It handles all kind of front side buses without much issue. Very stable. Uh, really nice board. Takes up to one megabyte of L2 cache. Benefits that's very debatable after uh, after 256k, but it does it. A uh, good bit of RAM it supports. Uh, it's, it's a nice board. Um, this is an earlier rever revision of it. 
believe it's 1.7. Um, don't quote me on that. But I do have the manual here, um, which is pretty helpful. Um, yeah, there, someone wrote, I didn't write that, someone wrote that. Uh, maybe that's their number, support line number. Um, interesting thing about this, though, is it doesn't reference, uh, let me see if I can, it's hard to do with one hand, but, yeah, if you look here uh, with the CPU settings and stuff, that's cash, uh, but here, it doesn't reference AMD at all. Um, 486DX4, uh, different, you know, times 2, 2.5, Three, um, but it doesn't reference AMD. It talks about Intel and Cyrix, but AMD, yeah, see, CPU manufacturer jumper settings. We've got Intel and Cyrix. Doesn't mention AMD, but yes, AMD CPUs work fine in this uh, this board as far as I've tested. I've had no issues. Um, I've already put in the 5x86, and it runs just fine. Uh, it's detected just fine. And here's the machine running with the AMD 5x86 at 133 megahertz. It works just fine, no issues whatsoever. Um, the, the manual didn't explicitly state AMD anywhere, but if you set the jumper settings to uh, DX4 with a times two multiplier, uh, I guess with these 5x86 CPUs, uh, that's their default setting, so they'll work at the 133 megahertz uh, if you have your jumpers set up for the uh, DX4 times two multiplier. And something else interesting, it does appear that it was the I.O. card uh, that was last time in this machine that was giving my mouse issues where only that weird older chunky style mouse worked. Um, with this new the CMD VLB controller that has the serial port built into it, um, mouse, the newer uh, serial mouse worked just fine, no issues whatsoever. And uh, even with the cute mouse drivers, no problems whatsoever. So it looks like the uh, mouse issue before was with that other weird... IO controller card. And uh, yeah, I'm going to install Windows on here, but right now I'm not going to go with Windows 95 or 98. I'm just going to install good old Windows uh, 3.1 on this machine. It just seems uh, really appropriate for to at least have Windows 3.1 in here, so I'm going to give that the old uh, install. Yeah, and Windows 3.1 runs just fine on this machine. Uh, seems very responsive, loads up really quickly, and uh, yeah, feels really good on this machine. So before we get to those benchmark charts we all love so much, I want to take a quick look at the BIOS settings here. And I, I was able to get pretty good settings and still maintain stability. Uh, local bus ready, there was transport and synchronize. I was told transport is the faster option. And with that option selected, I had no issues. Uh, DRAM speed though, there were four settings. There's like slowest, slower, faster, and fastest. To get stability at 50 megahertz and the 150 megahertz, I had to have the DRAM speed set to slower. Anything faster and I started running into major stability issues. So keep that in mind as we look at the benchmarks. All right, so here's our benchmark results. And uh, yeah, actually, uh, finally, at a 50 megahertz front and side bus, we are beating, uh, we are winning here. It does look like from these benchmark results that the AMD 5x86 with a times three multiplier, 50 megahertz front side bus at 150 megahertz is beating the 5x86 with a 40 megahertz bus and the times four multiplier at 160 megahertz. So uh, we are getting slightly better results here with 150 megahertz. Now it's not like night and day, but pretty much all of these tests, uh, we are getting better results at 150 megahertz. Now, keep in mind this is using the same BIOS settings we just looked at, so the DRAM is set to uh, slower, uh, else we were getting no stability with the 50 megahertz front side bus. So, uh, yeah, some of these you get better results than others, and speed sys, not so much of a difference. Uh, 3D Bench 1.0C, yeah, there's a couple points difference there. Uh, PCP bench down there at 320 by 200, uh, what is that, like two or three difference. Uh, Doom, uh, like a two or three frames per second difference. Quake's pretty close, one, one FPS difference there, so not, it's pretty negligible. And um, at the higher resolution there with PCP bench, it's still, it's less than one frame per second. So it's not drastic, but we are seeing a little bit of a, I, uh, advantage to the uh, 150 megahertz over the 160 megahertz. So yeah, I guess there's a little bit of truth to that here. I, now I'm not exactly sure why this is. Um, maybe it's because there's a like a megahertz difference. Because when we were looking at the 
50 megahertz DX chip running at 50 megahertz versus a DX2 at 66 megahertz, uh, we were seeing a little bit of a megahertz difference. Here there's only a, a 10 megahertz difference, where I believe with that there was a like 16 megahertz difference as far as the CPU speeds go. So maybe that has something to do with it. Um, although it, with the front side bus in that situation, it was it was like the opposite. So um, I don't know, kind of interesting. But uh, remember how we were talking about uh, that DRAM setting. So what happens when we up that to fastest? Because at 40 megahertz front side bus, uh, that AMD chip was stable at 160 megahertz. So let's see what happens when we go back into the BIOS settings. We run our chip at 160 megahertz and uh, we set the DRAM speed to fastest. And there you go. Boom. So with the BIOS tweaks, uh, really just setting the DRAM timing to fastest. Uh, we definitely see that uh, 5x86 at 160 megahertz pulling ahead. And I mean, that's the real weakness of that 50 megahertz front side bust. It's just stability issues. And even taking out the VLB, the second VLB controller, the IO one, and replacing it with a, like a ISA one, stability still just was crap after uh, going over those slower settings. So, I mean, I guess at the same time, like if, I guess if we could get that 150 uh, megahertz uh, AMD, if we could get it running at 50 megahertz with the uh, DRAM timing at fastest, I mean, I guess from looking at our earlier results, yeah, it should be faster than the 160 megahertz. But it's just, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I, I wasn't able to make it happen, and I played with the BIOS. I played with weight states and stuff. And um, it definitely seemed like that DRAM setting was the one that affected benchmarks uh, the most. And it's just, that's the problem with this 50 megahertz front side bus. Just stability uh, really hurts your ability to, like, play around and optimize your memory timings and things like that. So... Um, yeah, I, I guess, like I said, technically, at these same settings, I guess the 150 megahertz, uh, it would be faster, but you're just not going to be able to get those settings and it be stable, unless you maybe have, like, the perfect setup, and I, I don't know, even then. So, it, it's, I still say your, your best and your safest bet is going, when you do go with a 5x86, is just go with the times 4 multiplier, go with the 40 megahertz front side bus and 160 megahertz um yeah here it just it beats um the 150 megahertz soundly uh with those dram settings so yeah pretty good it pretty good results here um i'm just looking through them real quick yeah we're getting what 51 with doom that's pretty good i i didn't really compare this to some of my other machines um it'd be interesting if i would compare this to like a like an early Pentium, uh, something like that. But those are completely different setups, so it really wouldn't really make a difference. Um, I think those all have like PCI in them and stuff. But anyways, yeah, let's just uh, look at some a uh, few other things. Let's look at some games playing on this at um, the 160 megahertz with the BIOS tweaks. And uh, something else I want to point out really quick: um, if you happen to have a VLB like an I/O controller with drivers, uh, use them. Um, this is that CMD uh, VLB I.O. controller, and uh, I was getting a SpeedSys score of like 128 for the hard drive uh, at the very bottom there, and then after I installed the drivers for it, the DOS drivers and the Windows 3.1 drivers, um, I redid the test in SpeedSys, and yeah, my hard drive score went up to uh, like over 300. Uh, so those drivers can make a big difference, so um, yeah, if you've got the drivers... Remember to install them.
pay for screwing up my vacation. So uh, unfortunately at this point I was moving the computer or I did something and I had to disconnect the audio cable to the computer that was recording all this and unfortunately I forgot to put it back in so there's no audio for this portion and rather than re-record it all I'll just talk over it. Uh, so uh, this is Quake at uh, what was it 320 by 200 or something and it plays actually quite well. Uh, fine, very playable experience. Um, you know, pretty smooth, uh, as you can see here. It looks just fine. Um, I've been doing a little bit different thing with my videos lately. In the past uh, couple years, usually what I do, I would just crank out the games up to the max, uh, just because that's what I was interested in. I, even if I knew the machine wasn't going to play a game very well, I just wanted to see how well it would play a game when it was cranked up. But a couple videos lately, I've just been trying to set things so the games are playable on the system and you know play around with different resolutions rather than just crank it up all the way and uh, here's a little bit of level two I need to beat this game one of these days I need <laughs> I need to beat a lot of, I need to play more games I spend so much time you know working and then just like doing these videos and building hardware that I hardly ever play games um, I do have some plans I've said it before in the past but I I, like, I do have some plans to do some more videos on like games and series of games. It's not going to be anything super in-depth. It's not really going to be like reviews. It's not going to be streaming either. Just sort of maybe like overviews of certain games or game series or, you know, like I was thinking like top five of this kind of game. Well, not necessarily a top five list, just like five of this genre of DOS game or computer Windows 9X game. I don't know. Something like that. I just, I just think I need to play more of these games I have since I have like tons of <laughs> these old PC games that I just feel like I should be playing more games. Um, I don't know, I just have so much fun just building the hardware. Um, Alright, so let's move on. And here's Day of the Tentacle, which is probably a pointless inclusion because all I have is the demo here, so I don't have actual like gameplay. I just have the like the intro screen or what they showed in the demo on the Indiana Jones uh, Fate of Atlantis disc. Um, but I thought at least it would show, you know, you could hear it, um, because I see this is used to, this intro here is used to show off, uh, like, certain, uh, audio cards, uh, but I didn't have sound here either, so that was kind of completely pointless, but, hey, look, it's playing the, uh, the demo on the Indiana Jones disc just fine, um, maybe I should have just played, uh, I should have benched, not benched, but I should have just showed off it playing Indiana Jones and Fate of Atlantis here, but... Anyways, okay, so that concludes our look at uh, this, this machine playing a couple games for us. I guess that about wraps it up for what I want to say about this uh, beast of a machine. I would have liked to show you more games, different games. I know we always look at the staples. 
probably gets a little tiring, you know, looking at Doom and Duke Nukem 3D and Quake all the time. And it's a little bit ironic because I have literally hundreds of DOS games, but so many of them are in storage or they're just in boxes and under boxes and closets and it's just, it becomes like too much of a hassle to get to them. So I usually just go with the old standbys that I have, you know, uh, demos of or just whatever I have on loose discs and stuff. But, you know, I'd like to mix it up a little bit more. Um, I would have liked to show some different ones. I tried to show a couple different games, I think like Star Crusader and a couple different things, but yeah, I would have liked to show more, but like I said, with time constraints and everything along those lines. Yeah. So, um, what do I want to do with this machine in the future? And of course we need to address that 50 megahertz uh, thing again. Uh, so I guess 50 megahertz on the AMD 5X86, uh, I guess it kind of is faster than 40 megahertz with the times 4 multiplier but when you factor in just the instability of it and the inability to kind of tighten up your memory timings and settings in the BIOS when you're running with the 50 megahertz front side bus um, the when you when you figure all that in running it at 160 megahertz with a 40 front side bus uh, just blows the 50 megahertz away. You just get you get more stability, uh, and when you can play around with those timings with memory and all those other BIOS tweaks, it becomes much faster um, than when you're running at 150 megahertz on that 50 mega uh, front side bus. Um, so yeah, just just go with if you're looking for the speed, um, just go with you know the 40 megahertz front side bus if you want to be weird and do something a little different I guess you can do the 50 megahertz front side bus and as we saw it should be a little bit faster than 40 megahertz at the same memory settings but uh, yeah when you when you get around to like tweaking those memory timings and things like that it will just blow the 50 megahertz front side bus away uh, when you're running it at 40 megahertz front side bus god how many times have I said those two things in the last couple sentences um, just repeating myself, I think. Uh, so what do I want to do with this machine? I, I like it as it is. Right now, I'm really happy with it as kind of a really high-end uh, DOS machine, 46. Um, there's a couple things I definitely want to kind of do. Uh, we might be seeing a third video on this thing. I want to max the L2 cache out on this thing to one megabyte because I can. Uh, I think this board supports more RAM, uh, which I might do. And um, I just want to see how much that affects performance. Now, supposedly, if I did put one or one megabyte of L2 cache, it could hurt performance because we wouldn't be able to cache all that uh, memory. Um, I think even if we, we max the RAM out on this, it's not enough. But I'm not sure. But I want to see how much it does affect performance. And, you know, I just kind of want to max this thing out. Uh, I want to max out the RAM on that video card, too. Although, again, that seems to be like it's going to be pretty pointless. It shouldn't increase performance at all. Uh, it would let me get higher resolutions in theory, but the games probably aren't going to run well anyways at those high resolutions. So again, kind of pointless, uh, but I just want to do it and see. Uh, I definitely want to put Windows 95 on this, and in that case, maybe the extra memory might help, but... Again, I, I don't know. It's just something I want to do. It's, it's a weird case where maxing it out might really hurt it. Uh, but I just want to see. Uh, CPU, I would love to get that AMD 5X86 uh, to a mythical 200 megahertz. It's been done. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it with this motherboard. So uh, it, it's a weird case where you need like the right cooling, the right CPU, the right board. It's very hard to do. I'm pretty sure only a few people have done it. Uh, it'd be really cool to do, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, and I think there's actually... No, no, I was, was going to say, I think maybe there's actually official 200 megahertz 5x86 CPUs out there, but maybe I think I'm wrong on that. I think... I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong on that. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's theoretically possible, but I don't think, you know, with this setup I'll ever be able to get uh, get that speed. I'd probably have to go through dozens and dozens of... 5x86 chips to find one that would work at that speed but when I tried on this setup I did try it I just get a black screen it doesn't even post um, other routes I could go I could go with a Cyrix chip I do have a 5x86 120 megahertz 
Um, that, from testing and videos I've done in the past, that's actually slower than the AMD at uh, 160 megahertz. But it would be neat because it's kind of different. Um, but I already have a machine with that CPU in it, so I'm probably not going to go that route either, unless I can find a 133 megahertz Cyrix 5x86, which I doubt I will. Um, and then, of course, eh, Intel Overdrive might be interesting in this machine. Uh, again, it's going to be slower in most cases than the AMD that's overclocked in there now, uh, except in, you know, something like Quake that uh, is kind of tuned for the Pentium. Uh, maybe if I could find one of those overdrives and overclock it to 100 megahertz and put it in here, that'd be kind of neat uh, and unique, kind of a cool thing to do. But, you yeah, know, other than that, that's, uh, I don't know. So, they, there might be a third video on this machine in the future, but as it stands, I am pretty happy with it as a super fast 486. And uh, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I love to hear what you think about this machine and the upgrades and any suggestions on further upgrades and what I might want to do with this thing. Um, definitely going to keep it around. It's a pretty cool machine, pretty cool motherboard, and I'm uh, really happy with it. So. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you comment, thanks for commenting. Thanks for any likes. And uh, have a good one.